Welcome back to The Critical Gentleman. Today I want to talk about what I think is the most exciting watch to come out of Baselworld 2019 and why I think it's important for the rest of the industry going forward. Now I have to admit I'm a little bit biased because the Breitling Navitimer has long been one of my favorite watches. As a matter of fact, you can see one of my earlier videos as a review of the Navitimer, specifically reference A322, which is the model that I own. The 90s gave rise to the first generation of vintage re-editions, one of the most notable ones being the Tag Heuer Carrera re-edition, which I also own. However, since then we've seen really two schools of thought from manufacturers when it comes to vintage re-editions, and that's A, making the most faithful reproduction that they can, or B, making sure that there is some differentiating trait to make sure that the vintage collectors themselves are not getting their toes stepped on, so to speak. Now, any vintage collector, in my mind, will tell you that no modern reproduction, no matter how faithful, will ever truly damage the vintage market. The fact is that the value in these watches comes from their collectability, their rarity, and the fact that they are, by nature, antiques. So even if you recreate them and reissue them with modern materials and modern production and they look exactly alike, the only people who are going to be buying that watch as opposed to the original vintage piece are the ones to whom the collectability or the antiqueness of the originality is really not the major factor and is really more about the styling of the watch. And again, for those people who are spending their time and their money to really search for and seek out original vintage pieces in the best condition that they can. These these new pieces, these new releases coming out of the market almost don't mean anything and aren't really a threat. Now let's talk about why I think this watch is so particularly important. Now number one, this is one of my favorite vintage models of all time. The uh, 806 All Black, which is this model, um, represents one of the first major Navitimer release and two, I think is just a tremendously attractive watch. I really like the matching subdials as opposed to the 1960s era Navitimer, which had um, white subdials, more of that panda chronograph look. And I also really dig the syringe hands. That's what these are called when you have the um, when you have the pointy bit on the tip with the loom behind. It kind of looks like you know, ye olde type of hypodermic needle, right, syringe. And so I think it's a very attractive look. I like the way it uh, is styled, and I even like the what they call the beads of rice bezel, which is different from the bezel um, that is machined and styled a little bit differently on modern Navitimers. Now, going beyond my personal opinion that this is an attractive watch, I think one of the reasons that this is an important release is because Breitling has taken every measure to make sure that it is a faithful reproduction. They've really gone a long way to keep the originality. So if we look on Breitling's news page where they posted this announcement on March 15th, um, we see not only a whole slew of photographs featuring this watch, um, but we see their kind of rationale down here in this big wall of text describing all the different things that they thought about and considered when producing this model. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that despite all of the re-editions and despite all of the uh, vintage-inspired announcements from major brands recently, from the Longines collection, the Longines Heritage collection, to the Omega 57 trilogy that they released last summer, brands are frequently doing something a little different, meaning they're making some change or some way that at glance you can tell this is not an original vintage piece. Um, and I think that it's playing it a little bit safe. They're scared of stepping on the vintage market. They're scared of devaluing their own uh, secondary market pieces. And they're, they're frightened of scaring off collectors. That's why I have huge respect for Breitling in this piece. Now, this one you can see here is a photograph of an original. I mean, you've got a little damage to the acrylic crystal here. You can see some oxidation on the luminous markers and on the hands here. And if you flip to the re-edition, you almost can't differentiate between the two of them. Um, and frankly, I think it's a good thing. Um, um, there was one particularly fine specimen that sold on eBay about a year ago, I believe for, I want to say 10.5, but it was a really fantastic barn find, you know, drawer find, whatever you want to call it. It had almost never been worn. It was in practically mint condition. Um, and that bolt box, papers, bracelet, everything. You could not have done better than that auction. Um, and that kind of, to me, really underscored what the true value of these pieces is. Um, 
they want 8,900 US dollars for this re-edition. So they're already kind of encroaching on original prices. Uh, that's the one thing, my one criticism for this watch. But in another way, I kind of understand why Breitling may have done it on purpose, because they don't want this to be the cheaper option. They don't want this to be, oh, uh, I can't afford the original, so I'll just buy the new one. They want this to be a choice. They wanted you to say, well, I like the styling of the original, but maybe I can't get my hands on one, even though I'm willing to drop the cash. Instead, I'll put that same amount of money and give it to Breitling directly. This is how they're going to make their money, and this is how they're also not going going to devalue the original pieces. Um, so while I understand it, I don't necessarily like it because it puts it well out of my price range, um, but it does make sense. Uh, there are a few other things that I like about this watch. So these all-black Navitimers were produced in the era of radium luminous material. Now, if you're not familiar with radium luminous material, it is extremely dangerous. It is much more radioactive than tritium. So I in terms of taking unnecessary risks, I really like the idea that this is um, super luminova, um, non-radioactive material. It glows just like a modern, uh, any other modern sports watch with luminova on it would glow. But they've colored it. They've made it look extremely, extremely accurate in terms of the old, uh, in terms of the old loom. Now that's fascinating to me because a lot of tritium markers over time will age to a yellow color. Because these were a different compound which uh, contained radium and who knows what other material, they kind of uh, age more to a beige or a brown and that did not go over Breitling's head. They've, they've recreated that coloring faithfully. I don't know what printing method they used on this dial. Now, the reason I'm discussing this is because on these original 806s, it was actually printed in relief. What you had was a silver dial, which had been coated, and then they would print not the text on the dial, they would print everything else, meaning they would basically fill in the black around the silver, and all you'd be left with is um, the missing paint around all the numerals and all the text and all the markers and everything. So uh, I, there's probably better terminology that I could be using to describe this other than painted in relief. But um, I, what you ended up with was this really cool kind of metallic sheen to the dial. But now, is that a big deal? No. I think it's a really faithful recreation nonetheless, and I really like the styling, and I don't think it's losing anything. I couldn't find any information about this caliber. They say it's an in-house manual wine caliber based on the B01, which is an automatic caliber, so maybe they're just removing the automatic winding component. Um, I'm not sure. It's called the B09. I couldn't find any information. I'm really interested to learn more about this movement because they also go ahead and say that it will be included in more historical reproductions in the future. So it sounds like Breitling has a plan to continue this trend of re-releasing old watches or at least um, new watches may be inspired by their older models. Um, anyway, I thought this was a really exciting announcement. It's probably my favorite Basel World announcement in the last three years, and that includes the Omega Trilogy, that includes the Longines Legend Diver 36mm, which I still to this day want to own one, and even a year later, more than a year later, still can't find them. I just saw a few posts on, on a couple forums that said people are starting to finally get these from, from Longines dealers. A anyway, that's a topic for another video, but point being... Um, this is probably one of the most uh, exciting and awesome uh, releases from any watchmaker uh, in, in the last three years, in my personal opinion. Anyway, let me know what you think. Do you think Breitling is hitting the nail on the head here? Are they going against their faithful collectors? Um, please uh, let me know down in the comments what you think um, about this watch about this video and please don't forget to hit that like button or to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and thanks for watching the critical gentleman more soon